What's up people, Sohrab here with a new episode of Unreal Engine 4 Tutorials. This is the first episode of the Quick Tip series, in which I share some useful tips and tricks and best practices that I've learned using Unreal Engine 4. In this episode, I will talk about the tick event. This is an event that it runs in every frame, and it has two uses, two main uses. One is when you want to debug, so you use it together with the print string node to check that things work as you intended to. Another one is when you want to execute something constantly. But the tick event has the risk of being performance demanding. Basically, if you let it do a useless calculation every second, you're simply wasting CPU power. So you have to find a way to use it only when necessary. But the good thing is that a lot of times you can actually avoid using ticks all the time if you, if you want to do it only when a condition is met. So I'll demonstrate what I mean here with an example. Imagine like I have here, you have like a fire in your game and you want it to cause damage to the player constantly but only when the player is inside the fire. One way of doing this is to create a blueprint with a collision box and then on event tick check if the player is overlapping with this box and in that case just reduce the player's health per tick with an amount. In this case I have it on 0.05. To make sure that this works let's just Give it a try first. As you can see, when I go inside the fire, the health for the player character just starts draining. And if I go outside, then it stops draining. And it just resumes again. But as I said, this can be improved as we are just running this on every tick. And one sample, one instance of this fire is okay, but if you have many of these running all the time, then you are using a lot of useless, I mean, wasting CPU power. And uh, eventually on less powerful systems, you will run on, onto, into performance issues. So how can we solve this? Let's now say, We'll do this. So we'll get um, get a node to execute, which is, this node is called begin overlap and it executes when player starts overlapping with this box. And we get a reference to the player. Uh, we create a boolean and set it to true, which is basically uh, showing us when the player is overlapping. And then you reduce the player's health, but just by that small amount that you would do per tick. Then you come here and check if the player health is zero. If it is, then you kill the player, whatever your event is to, for killing it. If it is not, then you will check if the player is still overlapping. And this variable will be set to false when the player is not overlapping. You get a end overlap node and you set it to false. So this means that nothing will be executed if we are out of that box. But if we are, then we delay for a short amount, in this case 0.01 seconds, and then we create a loop. So we go back and reduce the health again. So this becomes a loop where you just incrementally reduce player health, check for it. If player is dead, nothing. And if he's out of that box, nothing. Otherwise, you've run the loop. So let's see if this one works now and how it compares to the tick solution. Yes, as you can see, the same effect. We're again reducing player health, but and if we move out, we don't. But 
the difference is i mean it's behind the scenes the effect is the same but now you're not when i'm here nothing is run so you're saving precious cpu power in this way and this effect adds up when you have many many instances of different things running so this is a good thing for optimizing your game and it's good to do from the beginning um, keeping this in mind when you're uh, scripting for your game i hope you enjoyed this episode and um, thank you very much for watching bye bye